that's not good. There we go. Let's see what happens. Oh. Hello everyone. This is my first video in a while, but uh, it's the first of many more to come. So I figured this would be a good subject with which to jump back in. Today we're going to talk about my hearing loss. Now I know a few of you are going, wait, what? Which is precisely why I wanted to make this video. Some months back I was at Little Italy and I was talking to the owners, Robin and Jay, who are dear friends of mine. Apparently I was sitting at the bar and I was eating and Jay asked me a question about the food and I accidentally ignored him. Robin later that evening was joking with me saying that I could just tune people out if I wanted to and I was really confused. Then she told me about Jay talking to me and that, yeah, Jay was talking to you and you just, you just completely ignored him and I was mortified. Luckily she thought it was funny. I apologized, I, you know, I told her I, I probably couldn't hear him and, she, you know, because of my, my bad hearing and she went, oh my gosh, I had no idea. I thought, I thought that was a joke this whole time. <laughs> Ugh, this is not a joke. Something similar happened with my friend Frank Jordan. Frank is a phenomenally talented bass player. He's one of the nicest people in the world and not too long ago I was talking to him and he made the joke, I can't believe Shiloh's actually talking to me and again I was confused. Apparently back in the day when Frank and Lolly played at Courtyard, Frank would come up and talk to me and I would seemingly ignore him and so he thought that I hated him which Cannot be further from the truth. How do you hate Frank Jordan? Is that even a thing? It's not. So again, I was absolutely horrified. I tried to explain as best I could and now I'm going to explain to you. So for those of you who are just now joining the party, hello, my name is Shiloh Martin. I'm a singer-songwriter from Birmingham, Alabama and I have high frequency sensorineural hearing loss. Now the first thing people automatically think when I say I have hearing loss, they go, oh, okay, you're a musician, you're around loud noises all the time, and so that's why. No, <laughs> that's wrong. My hearing loss is genetic. I got it from my grandpa. My grandpa is 93 now, so his hearing loss is naturally very profound at this point in his life. But he told us once a story about how when he was 18, he would be standing around with a group of friends. Everybody would be laughing except for him because he couldn't understand what people were saying. I first noticed something was wrong when I was 19. I went to see Sherlock Holmes with Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law in the movie theaters and I could not understand a word. This of course worried me a lot. So I got an appointment with an ENT, I took a hearing test, and hey, everybody sounds like Charlie Brown's parents. I'm gonna show you guys my audiogram from last year. Here it is. If you've never had a hearing test, what they do is they sit you in a soundproof booth with these earbuds in your ears and they play different frequency tones in each ear. And whenever you can hear the tone, no matter how faint, you push a button. If you can't hear the tone, they will gradually raise the volume of the tone till you can. The blue X's that you see there signify each time a tone was played in my left ear and in turn the red O's signify a tone being played in my right. The vertical axis represents decibel level and as it descends it gets louder and the horizontal axis represents frequency. Left to right is low frequency to high frequency. So with that information you can see they started off playing low frequency tones which I was able to hear at a very very low volume. But as they get into the mid-range to high frequency, you can see it begin to slope downward as they end up having to play the tones louder and louder so I can hear them. For instance, this lowest red circle here represents a 6 kilohertz tone played in my right ear that I was only able to hear until they raised the volume to 70 decibels. This gray area here is what's referred to as the speech banana. It's where average human speech falls, volume and frequency wise. And as you can see here, my ears can only pick up less than half of it. Referring back to that six kilohertz tone I mentioned earlier, six kilohertz is around about where consonants like S's and F's fall. In order for my ears to perceive them, I need to hear them at 70 decibels, but uh, they unfortunately hang out in the 15 to 48 decibel range in normal conversation. Thus, almost all of what you say becomes an unintelligible mess to me. Another thing I've noticed is that a lot of people have different ideas about what my hearing loss comprises. A lot of people think it's a volume problem, that everything in here is just low and I need it to be louder. It's not necessarily that I need you to speak louder, it's that... Freddy. Come here. <laughs> oh, Freddles. She's messing with my seat. What are you doing, huh? What are you doing? You want to be in the video? Go on, Fred. Bye. Anyway, 
It's not necessarily that I need you to speak louder, it's that I need you to speak clearer. I can hear the volume of your voice. I hear the TV fine. Sometimes when my mother is watching ID Investigation, it's too loud for me and she has perfect hearing. Volume is not the problem, but certain things in that volume, in your speech, like the aforementioned F's and S's, there are high frequency sounds all in there that my inner ear can't perceive. So I'm hearing your voice. I hear the TV. I hear the radio. I know that there's verbalizing going on but I can't understand it. This is especially bad with children and women and anybody who is very soft-spoken. If you're soft-spoken and you're trying to talk to me, you're gonna have a bad time. Whispering? Oh man, forget it. <laughs> It'll sound like wind through a wooden fence. There's another vlogger that I watch named Jessica. She said something similar in one of her videos and I'm, I'll link it in the description down below or I'll put it around in here somewhere so you can also watch it if you want to. She made a really good point. And um, it's something that I've thought about, but it's something I didn't really know how to put into words until I heard her say it. But basically, if you and I are alone in a room together and I hear you talking, I know that there's a 99% chance that you are speaking to me. And if I didn't understand you, I will ask you to repeat yourself because let's face it, I probably didn't understand you. However, if you and I are in a restaurant and you are four feet from me, and four feet this way is a couple talking and down the bar there's a bartender clinking glasses and there's house music and TVs and all this other lively stuff going on then you talking to me is going to fade into that wall of sound. Because I have a hard time understanding you anyway and with the added noisy environment there is nothing about hearing your voice that is going to definitively tell me that you're speaking to me. So, unless you come stand next to me, or you tap me on the shoulder, or you come and stand right in front of me, then, like I said, you will unfortunately just fade into the background noise. It was basically the same story with Frank. <sighs> Poor Frank. I just can't believe he thought I hated him. Again, this occurred at 280, so just like Jay, that little Italy, it was a noisy, crowded environment and both their voices just got lost on their way to my ears. Frank also said that if I wasn't outright ignoring him I would do this little thing like he would say something to me and I would do this weird little laugh and then kind of walk away. <laughs> and I hate that so much because that is a thing that I used to do. Wait 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 in hindsight, while I was editing this, it occurred to me that I probably need to clarify this moment right here. I would do the so-called weird little laugh and walk away thing because I was so painfully uncomfortable asking someone to repeat themselves that I would just pretend I heard them and hope for the best. That's all. A lot of people see this as a funny little personality quirk, and don't get me wrong, I can laugh at myself, but... It's also set me back uh, in a lot of ways. Probably the worst side effect of my hearing loss has been what happens in social situations, as you can tell. <laughs> in a lot of instances, I was really just like my grandpa in that group of laughing people. It was like I was there, but not really. As a result of this, I would end up isolating myself and letting myself be isolated. There were times when I would just straight up dread having to talk to people because I knew that it was going to be a struggle. Another horrible side effect of this was that I stopped going to movies and I love going to movies. Even the loud movie theater dialogue was basically 60 to 70 percent unintelligible so I just quit going. I couldn't hear sirens until they were right near me which is borderline dangerous, never mind annoying. I also teach kids at my church and I would always have to get them to repeat themselves or get someone else to tell me what they were saying. I also play guitar in church and during mass uh, my dear friend Janet would come up to me and whisper some kind of uh, last minute instructions and oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that's the worst. When someone is trying to relay information to me quickly and quietly, it, abandon all hope, ye who enter here. When I wasn't playing guitar and I was just attending mass, uh, there were times when I couldn't understand what the priest was saying at all. The congregation would be laughing and smiling and nodding and I just knew that he was imparting some bit of wonderful wisdom and I wanted so desperately to know it, but I, I I would never know. But fortunately, if you noticed, I'm talking about all these problems in the past tense. 
they're a thing of the past because a few months back I got hearing aids and wow it's 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 awesome. I'm probably over the 10 minute mark here on this video, so I'm gonna leave you guys with that. If you would like to hear about that, then that is what I'll discuss in the next video. I know you're also probably wondering why I let such a long time pass between when I discovered the hearing loss and when I got the hearing aids, which I will also cover. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and again, thank you. Till next time.